Hey, welcome to the Nonprofit Leadership Studio. We're going to do a hurricane story. I have with me the hero of the hurricane, uh, Mayor Sylvester Turner. Uh, Mayor, how are you doing, man? I'm doing fine. It's good to be with you yeah, this evening. Yeah, it's great to be with you. Thanks. So I want to talk about the hurricane. Okay. And uh, we've had a lot of leaders talk about their stories during the hurricane, but you were at the sense, the center of the storm, <laughs> right? Did you learn anything different about your leadership skills when you had this big crisis around you? Well, certainly, certainly it was tested. I yeah. Mean, you know, I don't care how many times you, you, you prepare for, for events like, uh, like Hurricane Harvey until you're actually in it. Yeah. You just never know how, how other people will perform. And quite frankly, you never know what, how you will perform. Yeah. But I, will, but I would tell you, uh, when you're working with some exceptional people, yeah. and I will tell you that in this city, uh, and our command staff, the Office of Emergency Management, and our city departments, uh, we have some excellent people who are good at what they do. Um, but collaboration, mm -hmm. getting information in real time is critically important. Mm -hmm. Making sure you have the right people sitting around the conference table is yeah. important. And so every day starting, let's say that Saturday, yep. prior to the big rainfall, yeah. and for the next two weeks, um, you know, I had key people uh, throughout the city sitting around the table, in addition to key representatives like from Centerpoint, yep. uh, from the Red Cross. Yeah. Um, they were all at the table, uh, the, uh, I mean, the, um, uh, the Coast Guard, all yep. at the table, every, every single day, all day. And so that, that communication was sort of essential for you. You were a better leader, with, and they were, with constant communication. Get, when, you, when you're getting information in real time and when you're collaborative in your approach, because mm -hmm. uh, you, you have to trust people in their respective fields. And we were having the press conferences twice a day, one at 9 a.m., another one somewhere yeah. around 6, uh, 6 p.m., because people who are listening to you, they're, they're needing that, they needed accurate information, and they needed it in real time, and they needed it from all different um, sectors, so to speak. So, um, you know, collaboration, critical. Yeah. You know, that's critical. And being hands-on, yeah. let me tell you, that's... that's, that's and people uh, like seeing that, don't they? I mean, yeah. I think, you know, we saw an extraordinary amount of number of people that sort of became heroes in their own right, or just volunteers, yeah. and everyone feeling like they wanted to help out. Uh, I think that was, I mean, by seeing you out there and others out there, you know, the police chief, uh, it made a big difference for people, didn't well, it? Well, especially when, you, when you're going through a crisis and people, uh, they, they, are uns they don't know mm -hmm. and they're needing, they're needing you to provide the information. But, um, but also what's important is um, the speaking in um, very clear terms. Yeah. You know, that's important. Uh, being decisive. Yeah. I would tell you, when, when I'm sitting around the conference table and that literally, I, I guess, on every day, on the, during the day, there are about 30 people, 30 plus people that are sitting around the conference table. You have to, you have to make a decision. Yeah. You know, you got to, you know, I, I, I remember one example very clearly. It was the, that Monday morning after we had 20, 30 inches of rain mm -hmm. that fell, that Sunday, Sunday night. And uh, the people from Public Works Department came to me and said, Mayor, uh, the Northeast Water Purification Plant is going to go down. Wow. And, I mean, they didn't say, you know, there is a potential. They said it is it going, going to, yeah. in three hours, it is going to go down. And, Mayor, you're going to have to issue an order that people will have to start boiling their water in the city of Houston. And uh, i never forget what I said to them. Now, if you are telling me that you have explored all possibilities, uh, both within the city and you have reached out to contractors and others outside of the city and you all all conclude that there is nothing else we can do then I will ma I'll make the announcement but you got to be willing to tell me that and they, they said well um, we can't say we have that, that we have explored all possibilities and so what I told them, you know, I tell you what, I let people know that we're having a problem, okay? But you go back and come back to me and say, we have explored all, and this is what will have to be. And money is not an option to keep this yeah. plan open. So four hours, Bob, they came back to me four hours later, and they said, um, Mayor, we were talking with some of the contractors, and we have, we've, we've purchased, we've got you eight hours more. 
Mm. The system will stay up at least for eight hours. I said, fine, keep, keep working. Keep it going, yeah. And then they came back uh, that evening and they said, we think we may have a solution to keeping it going so we can at least go through another day. The system is good for another day. I said, fine, keep going. And the next day they came back and said, um, we got a solution, man. We're going to put in a bypass system. Uh, we've been working with some of the private contractors. The system will stay up. Mm -hmm. And it was at that moment when a lot of the pressure really yeah. went off my shoulder. Yeah, yeah. Because if we had had to issue an order that the, that the, that the water system yeah. was no longer safe, that simply would have added to the whole... Well, you uh, just look at Beaumont. They had uh, yeah. that problem, and, right. and it, it exasperated everything. Right. I think the fact that we kept power mostly in the city, yes. and that we had water, and people were able to watch TV, and I think you guys coming on often, and the camaraderie that you and the leadership sort of showed during that time, I think really helped well, people. I, I enjoyed my relationship, and enjoyed my relationship with the county judge. You yeah. know, I had him and, um, the county and the city worked very well together. He and I, you know, we're in constant communication with, with, with one another. He's easy to work with, so I appreciate his, uh, yeah. his leadership. Um, but yeah, keeping the power on, mm -hmm. keeping the water system sound mm -hmm. um, made all the difference, I think made all the difference in the, yeah. in the world. And, uh, and the first responders were exceptional. Yeah, I know. But, uh, but I would also say to you, the other municipal employees were also equally uh, exceptional. And uh, we had two people, two city employees that lost their lives. Mm. Uh, one was the sergeant yeah. um, trying to get to work, drove yeah. two and a half hours. But, you know, but instead of going home, he was going to go to another location. That's when he drowned. Wow. And then we had another employee in public works who started with the city in May, of oh this, my. May of this year. Bob, the interesting thing with him is that he had been in and out of prison for 20 years. He went through our, the city of Houston's reentry program. Yeah turned his life around. We hired him after going through the reentry program in public works in May, called his supervisor uh, early that, I guess, Sunday morning, Monday, saying he was running into some water, our water. Mm -hmm. Supervisor told him, you know, just be careful. But he said, I'm, I'm coming. Mm -hmm. And um, that was the last that we heard of him, and he drowned. Wow, that's horrible. You know? But, you know, exceptional employees yeah. who were willing to both sacrifice their life, their lives, for the betterment of, of the people in this city. But those are the type of employees that exist at the city of Houston. We have uh, we had about 2,000 city employees whose homes were flooded. Yeah. Um, many of our police officers, firefighters, were working without their medicine, and many of their homes were flooded, but they, they still were showing up uh, every single day, working all day, even knowing that their homes themselves it, were it's, flooded. It's easier to be a leader when you have a good team and you have a whole staff yeah, of people. Makes that's, a difference. Yeah, it makes, makes a difference. Makes my job a lot easier. So yeah. when people when people thank, thank me uh, for the service, um, I appreciate that. But um, I've got to give a great deal of yeah. credit to some exceptional, some exceptional employees um, and others from Centerpoint and other mm -hmm. entities who were had representatives around the table who were providing information in real time. And then when you say, okay, you know, can we keep this power on? Yeah. Uh, and they were out there working to keep the power on. So, um, and Centerpoint, I, I give a great deal, of, great deal of credit because within a few days after the storm, 85% um, of the power was back on. Yeah. And then it went to 90, 92, and then eventually we were down just to a few thousand homes. Wow. Ex a lot of work still to be done, though, in the recovery, but ex extraordinary effort. That's our leadership story for today. Thank you for being here, and thank you, Mayor Turner, for your leadership story today. Thank you.